Carmilla? Carmilla. Carmilla. Okay, they needed a little bit better damage distribution, I guess. Ooh. That was something that was a problem earlier. Yeah. For this evening, Welcome it's me nice to join here with Ingon on the English desk. Game number three, last match of the day. The highlighted match here. Who would have thought these are the picks we would have ended up with, man? I would say, you know, it's funny looking at the lineup rating because, was, yeah, it's 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 quite different. Yeah, I, I was honestly hoping for a, a Chaknu set up Rome. I get, wait, wait a minute, Chaknu has to pop his Purify here because, again, the problem of Omega still remains from game number two. It's the Yuezushi. How do you stop that? Ideally, you want to go for dive in and be beside you and be beside Zushin to avoid the Lantern Flare. Yeah. But in this case, Chaknu has the Carmilla. I agree with Renmar in terms of early to mid. It might go to Omega. But for the for the late game, you know, it might go Wait, to Aurora. You, you feel an Aurora for yeah. late game? Yeah. A apart from, of course, Jome with the Moscow. But they were able to solve the Jome problem in game number two. Yeah, with the with the demon kite, right? With the demon kite, with Fanny. With, with, with Fanny, yeah. <laughs> with the Fanny. With demon kite, yeah. yeah. That's why it was banned out too. But uh, you can see this a whole lot of action top side. Okay. You get a flicker out. So they're gonna deal with that. But my the the thing that really stuck out to me is, uh, like Renmar mentioned, the fact that you have this Gatacacha with a Tigreal and then a Bane. Whoa! And Dora's gonna get first blood though, but uh, a little off camera there, but. That's the thing, I think that combination alone is going to be quite deadly to, to work against here. So already though, Andoru getting that first blood is going to help him early on. Okay, this is what Renmar was saying. The early game power spike might fall in favor of Omega, but this is what also happened during game number two. Yeah. Remember, Andoru started 1-0-1, Demon Kite 0-1-0, but during the five, uh, eight minute mark, I think, uh, Aurora was able to turn things around and Doming goes in with the Lycan Pounce on control as Renegade tries to delay Andoru with a purple buff. They're trying to uh, delay, and Andoru dealt with all of this in the previous game. So this time around, with the lead that he's gotten himself, as long as he continues to build that, that's going to be the same thing. But Bane, like we know, in the jungle, farms incredibly fast. You yeah. know, very quick. Uh, I know, you know, our fellow caster Leo out there, he loves this pick, jumps for joy when it is locked in. <laughs> so if he's watching at home, shout out to him. Right now, though, this turtle for the taking, it's just, it just looks like it's going to go to Omega. And Ryota zoning out two members as Andoryu picks up the turtle. Look at this terrify onto Whoa. Edward. Here comes a deadly catch, but Ryota continuing with the Infernal Pursuit. Andoryu gets a kill onto Demon Kite. AOG is there just to delay, but he's going to fall down. Brings down with him. Whoa, Ryota, Edward. Edward still escapes. That's a one-for-one one trade, but Omega picks up the turtle. Omega picks up the turtle, but I feel like they could have gotten more there, but unfortunately, they weren't able to camp out on Edward. You know, part of that, again, Vengeance played a part there. It was great to have, but yeah, that's tough. Smart Omega is still getting the objective, getting this little lead that they have they can work around with. And Doru, like I mentioned before all that broke out, was as long as he can build up on the lead that he had, which he has, he got, some, he got himself another kill. That's going to be great for scaling quickly, and that's exactly what you want to do on this Hayabusa pick, because all of that does all all that does is allows Jome to just farm up, have his golden experience, do his thing, and get to the point where we've seen him happen time and time again on a Mozkov pick. Part of that equation, though, is also I'm wondering, like for Chaknu, we've seen the Carmilla pop up a couple times now, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, you know, but. Leave it to one of the players in the league that has the most unique hero picks uh, popped up. I think he's at 11 right now. Yeah, and uh, the last one we used for Miller was actually Spider Miles. Yep. With his debut pick, game number two. We didn't notice much flashing plays from uh, uh, Carmilla, of course. But of course, you, you can feel the Curse of Blood coming in, especially during huge team fights. And that's what you can expect later on from Chakno. Although there's not going to be a game-changing set, one Curse of Blood during a crucial neutral objective data might be enough, but Omega focusing their attention onto Doming. Doming's not having a good time right now. Even before the rotation from Chaknu up top, yeah. Jom's dominating the laning phase. Yeah, Jom's doing a good job in that lane. He picks up the corrosive side now too. Earlier on, you saw uh, this time, you know, Andoro went with the Hunter Strike first. Uh, we'll see if he actually decides to build Sky Piercer or not. Eternal Guard going to drop. Eternal Guard onto Renege. He's going to fall down. That's one initiation gone for Aurora. But here comes Yue with the Lantern Flare. Picks up Ukiri. Pops his Purify. Whoa. Edward! Is he going to go down though? 
manages to escape here, and now they're working their way onto you Yue. Andoryu goes in with the shadows, a killing spree. That's 3 0 already for Andoryu with his Hayabusa. Scaling is exactly what's happening here for Andoryu. It's Smart Omega now also. After that, Skirmish will go and start up this turtle. It looks like, though, Roro wants to delay this. Yeah, Jay still here alongside Edward. Andoryu finding his spot, finding his space. Demon Guide is here working on track two, but gets the turtle along with the weak shadow oh. kill. Red with the implosion, catches Andoryu, blood to death, <laughs> catch, but Argonne gonna bring him down. He picks up another kill as Demon Guide tries to walk away, but brings down Track new with him. Ryota manages to bring down Demon Guide, but the fight is not yet done. Edward going head to head with Ryota. Two tanky XP laners, nothing's gonna happen there. Yep, uh, and again, amongst it all, Andoryu. <laughs> Doesn't go down, ends up getting the turtle, and that's going to be a problem as the game continues on for Rora. You you now have to deal with this hyperscaling of Andoru as he jumps in, but that's at the point where he is. He can go in between these turrets, even to the point where, and eventually he's down between the tier two turrets. Oh, Joe with the big spear of destruction, but Domeng manages to escape with a good trans the flicker. wolf transformation, good flicker. Use that flicker defensively. That's what he's got to do at this point. But that's the thing. Jome can just show up, you know, and join those fights, join those uh, initiations here. But that's the thing I was going to say. Aurora, they still have to deal with Andorio. And look at the focus on the top. Oh, Ren and Jay pushes Chak New. Now Domen uh, commits the implosion, but the internal guard from oh. Ukir is there. Jome doing the free hit. Here oh. comes Edward with AOG connecting on to three. But is he gonna be out? Is he gonna out sustain the damage? The vengeance is also there. And now Yue, Spear of Misery, Riona, Inferno Pursuit, killing spree already for Ukir. Two members left up top for Aurora as Omega still standing strong, but will break Jungler down battle. Ryota. Jungler battle of 1v1. Oh, Can we get a look on Demon Kai? He's oh. going to chase Andoryu. Here comes Demon Kai. Andoryu 1v1. Does he oh. have the ultimate though? Yo, no. shadows it out. Plays Demon Kai. Plus they get a kill on to Doming. Look at the Barangay. Oh, Dominating that's... every single lane. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate, man. It's... It's, uh, what, a crab pirate versus a ninja. That's not a fair fight, man. Your <laughs> crab cannon can only go one direction. Well, you got four quad shadows around you. We're going to look at the replay here brought to us by Infinix. And there's the 1v1 retirement. Look at this. Where are you going to shoot your cannon? There's so many... <laughs> Ooh. And Sky Piercer procs too. Oh, and another clash is here. Shut down. This time, AOG connects onto Andoryu. Renner J is also going to die there. Deadly catch onto Yota. Will he out sustain this? He's going to fall down in the hands of Demon Kai. There is a turtle up for grabs. And that's two members down for Omega. Here is the comeback we're all been waiting for. But Joan works on the bottom lane. Spear of Destruction is going to hit as Aurora secures a turtle. Okay, the trading is happening at this point. And so at least, you know, Roro will grab that turtle, last one of the game. They get some gold in their pockets that they can work around with, plus some turrets. So as much as Omega has had a good time controlling that early game and getting to that point, now you're in the position where, you know, Roro has actually got a good fighting chance for the objective. They still have plenty of time, a minute and a half, to build up the items that they need and get to where they need to be. But right now, it's just kind of controlling that pace, getting to being able to match up against Smart Omega in a full team fight because so far we've seen these like disjointed kind of across the map unfair numbers or unfair advantage happening whether it's Jome, whether it's Andoru pushing but when it gets forced to an actual Lord fight, a Lord shuffle like we like to say it right now that's where you get to see these lineups shine and right now the focus seems to be here on the tier 2 top side Five members of Omega are here. Chaku still has the Curse of Blood. They can initiate. Ren J has no flicker. And now, man, I have to commend Edward because Edward's keeping Aurora afloat. That's two consecutive Avatar of the Guardians connecting to yeah. every single member, plus the shutdown onto Endoryu. And if the the graphics are right, I think his second item was a Winter Crown. After Thunder Belt, as Ren J tries to work on, tries to escape Chaku and Ryota. I think his second item was a Winter Crown, first item Thunder Belt. So the concept is really AOG than just pop the Winter Crown. Yeah. Like as much as possible, you want to just kind of jump on in, get the taunt off, the unbreakable if you can, uh, and then pop that Winter's Crown. And he's got a Vengeance as well, you know? So he's got, he's got a lot of options here on Edward's entry point. 
But him or Renegade can actually do that for the team. And that's what I'm saying, like their team finding capabilities are, are great around a Lord Pit, an objective pit like this. Because then Demon Kite can also lock down, you know, with the deadliest catch. And that's something that Smart Omega always has to watch out for, especially for Andoryu, as now they might try to get Andoryu to, you know, face front, get into uh, the actual fight. Now, yeah. Andoryu can play it safe and just kind of show up, you know, with the Shadow and then go in for the Retribution. But for the most part, he's got to rely on his frontliners to start things up. And that's why Ryota has been doing this constantly, don't they? Oh! 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 Spear of Destruction! Oh! Big J! What a big outplay! Deadly catches there, pops in pure oh! pop onto Demon Kite. He's gonna fall down. Okay, unleashes the Eternal Guard. Three members of Aurora are down. The next target is Edward. Joe wow. cutting things off as Adoryu picks up a double kill. It's only Renegade, the captain left. Big J comes out with a big play. And so they'll get a little bit of push on the turret, but ultimately they had an amazing fight. And now they'll get the objective, they'll get the Lord here. Man, if you're Aurora, you don't even know what happened. Man, even me. <laughs> I honestly didn't see the Spear of Destruction because I was focused on what Yue was doing, trying to zone out Omega. But man, it takes a lot of guts, a lot of skill to go up against the possible next gold standard. Do that. Another outplay from Jome. And from then on, Omega extends their lead. 5.4k gold lead. And looking at the damage dealt, Ukir with almost all his internal guards always connecting to the right targets at the right time. I love I love to watch Jome play. I know, you know, we say big J, big Jome, but Jome, man, the improvement in this player ever since he first stepped into the MPL and it started really show, showing his mechanical skills. It's great to see him. I know we often see him on the Moskov, but it just feels like it's second nature to him at this point. So with all that being said, Lord making its way down the bottom, tier twos are gonna fall here. And Smart Omega sets their sights on the base turrets of Aurora. Winter Crown being picked up here for Ryota. Expect a possible initiation coming through from them. They wait. A little bit longer as that mid wave gonna be timing well with the bottom push now. Here comes Edward with the AOG, but Jones still manages to escape there. Winter Crown will be popped by Ariota. Is he gonna fall down? He will, as the Lord bursts down and hit with their turret onto the bottom. Land a killing spree coming in from Adorius, brings down Edward, oh. goes in once again, brings down Renegade oh. as well, it's not even done. Then he catches there, Adorio onto the crystal, brings down Demon Kite, a maniac for Andoryu! Oh, Doming, I think he wants to possibly push this, it's only him. You got an immortality on Chaknu, but it's gonna be up to him to push into the base here, defend Domeng all alone for this wave. Five seconds before Edward respawns, they have the minions. Is this the revenge tour Omega is waiting for? Domeng trying to delay as Joe works on the crystal, and the revenge tour is complete as Barangay brings down Aurora. Man, oh man. That's exactly what we expect for the second half of the regular season. Smart Omega feeling really good about this series and what a showing it was for a highlight match here. Big Joe, gonna put it